thank you so much for joining me uh, this afternoon. This has been a very exciting session, and I hope that um, this contribution is somewhat different from what we've seen before. Um, this is very much specifically focused on um, building these um, this 3D object-based curricula for high school and early um, uh, freshman level students at the university. Um, the project I'm going to be talking about today is called Educating with Evidence. I'm going to try to get through a little bit of this background first, why we're doing the project and how it came about, uh, and the interesting component, which is the Underground Railroad uh, in southern Illinois in the U.S., and then take you to the page and show you what we've done so far. So, of course, to get started, um, while traditional museum exhibits make accessible objects that are extremely rare or which comprise the most beautiful exemplars of civilizations and groups that made them, they are traditionally meant to be seen but not touched. Their presence recognized by reaching out to on-site visitors. In this regard, while aiding to the construction of exceptional narratives around objects that amaze and perplex us and inspire our curiosity about the past, the social context of such objects becomes lost in translation through the storage box, from storage box to display. Of course, museums and heritage collections are very much a part of the digital present. And we have entered a new era of interpretive workshops and online access to 3D representations of important world collections that is gradually transforming our view of the past. The process of making such objects accessible in exciting new ways is being met with remarkable success. And I think we've seen that this morning in all of the, the presentations we've seen so far, that this is really a dramatic way to um, engage learners uh, of very different styles from very different backgrounds in the process of uh, um, learning more about objects. Talking objects from British Museum is one that I like very much. Uh, Discovery Center and of course uh, all of the online projects that, that we saw today are a part of this, this major transition. So with, with that kind of idea in mind, what I'm concerned with is how to teach about archaeology or with archaeology in the high school classroom. Attendant to these, these interesting museum exhibits that we've seen is perhaps nowhere else in the social sciences are we more capable of dealing with the impact of these or exploring the impact of these new digital technologies uh, than in how we approach and present our cultural heritage data when teaching archaeology to students and citizen scholars alike. While we have become more effective at teaching archaeology over the past several decades, many unforeseen challenges such as the lack of object uh, context when we bring objects into the classroom or we set up these, these fake excavation units or using stand-in objects um, as as exemplars of what we're trying to do, oftentimes create a, creates a lot of confusion for the students and misunderstandings are abundant. A critical matter of concern is that while our job is to reconstruct the uncertain, fragmentary, and incomplete past using material remains, the classroom setting serves to detach those very objects that enrich and enliven our inquiry from their social context. By teaching archaeology rather than with archaeology, students often fail to recognize the significance of objects or use them as primary resources for understanding the past. Now, as archaeologists, we're, we're sort of embedded in that idea of, of using objects for our interpretations of the past. but. Uh, our students are not necessarily uh, at that level yet, so sometimes it's hard to make that transition. It is the position of the authors of this paper that for social science educators, we must teach with archaeological remains 
actual archaeological remains rather than about them, and use the experiential dimension of archaeological fieldwork, for example, as a means by which to access, access their social context. The implications of which is that through the experiential learning process, we shift archaeology away from its current position as a peripheral teaching aid for social studies, in the US in particular, and begin to teach the human past with objects that truly define and characterize the past that we're talking about. Thus, archaeological objects become a foundational tool for helping students understand the full scope of human experience, providing material evidence of human agency as well as understanding the materiality of human behavior over the entire span of human existence. So that's a pretty profound uh, statement about objects and how we deal with them and our, our contribution. Uh, I'm not sure if we've effectively done that yet. Of course, this presents a unique opportunity, sorry about that, uh, to infer behaviors and ideas from objects, giving an authentic voice to underrepresented groups, such as the enslaved peoples escaping their bondage along what has become to be known as the Underground Railroad, uh, and concerning other minorities, women, etc. That objects are embedded with shared cultural meaning and reflect the sum of various mental and social processes grants access to the past through experience of context, fostering deeper understanding of the particular ways being in a particular context has transformed ideas into material existence. So with all of these ideas in mind, how we approach the, the museum, how we approach the digital museum, and how we approach teaching archaeology in the classroom, and how we bring that experience that has captured and captivated all of our attention uh, to young learners and learners of various sorts is, is fundamentally the, the key issue that we're dealing with. And the main idea here is that we need to teach with rather than about archaeology. We need to teach with objects rather than about objects as we learn about in museums. And we need to create an environment in which we can understand the context as well. In the present case study, we're focusing on, on a small community known as Miller Grove. Uh, this is a pseudo example, not actually Mill Abby Miller's place, but um, something like what her house might have looked like. In the present case, we are attempting to recreate the 19th century experience of life in a small African American community in the classroom using objects and other accessible tools for exposing the past. Settled near an African American Methodist Episcopal Church in the 1830s, by freed African Americans in the US, in the, the southern US, Miller Grove grew as a small settlement until its decline in the early 1900s. For many reasons, the location may not have been ideal for African Americans trying to start a new life located just 30 miles north of slave-holding southern states, the residents here were very close in time as well as space to their enslaved past. Conditions not only wor worsened in the 1850s when something known as the Fugitive Slave Act uh, was passed in Congress giving white citizens in the North, grounds to capture African Americans that they thought were suspected as being runaways and return them to slavery. One of the many conditions that facilitated and fostered the hidden network of people that assisted others to achieve their freedom, in many cases freeing to the North and into Canada, uh, and this network was known as the Underground Railroad.
So our method is we take a three-stage approach. We have taken a three-stage approach, which combines not only artifact identification using 3D printed models of the objects that we have recovered through our excavations of Miller Grove, um, but by asking students to answer a series of very simple questions. What is the object? Who might have used it? How might they have used it? Simply based on the objects themselves. And those are the same kinds of questions that we often ask when we find ourselves in, in museum settings or when we begin uh, looking deeper into the information that's available about, about particular kinds of objects. In stage two, we transition from simply using those printed objects into using those objects as additional primary sources to be used with our text-based evidence. And they use the objects in that regard with the, the other primary sources to corroborate their assumptions about objects. So this project was funded by the Library of Congress, uh, which has a lot of electronic resources and historical resources that are open access and available to everyone. So that provided a valuable resource to us to use in conjunction with the printed objects themselves. And then of course, in stage three, we recombine the objects with their physical context uh, in a somewhat a traditional interpretive archaeological way using objects and their context to, to help us learn something about the past. So ultimately, we think this is a very exciting new approach that has not been implemented in our high schools just yet, but is currently being taught in a number of local high schools using 3D archaeological objects. Uh, we maintain that we can create an, experience, an experiential place-based learning opportunity for students that they wouldn't otherwise have. Maybe they can't get into the field. They're um, not within range of, of visiting a wonderful museum. Um, and moving by moving objects out of museum into the hands of those who stand to learn the most, our students, our, our community learners, reuniting objects with their very real and dynamic social context and teaching with archaeology rather than about archaeology. So I'll take you here. Let's see here. I can get back. So this is our work in progress. This is where we are so far. We have a number of curricula that are available right now. And of course, the project that I've been assisting with are the 3D printed objects. So we'll come here. So our current project, as you can see here, uh, we are making 3D scans of everyday artifacts that were recovered from uh, our excavations. In many, in many ways, these parallel the objects, the Viking objects that we were looking at before that are kind of uh, not suitable for, for display in a museum collection. However, they are of great cultural significance and very important to, to the topic that the students are asked to address. At present, these models are static. The next stage is to move into the AR uh, component or the VR component and bring these objects to life. Currently, they can be uh, downloaded. Sorry about that. And you'll have a nice copy that you can actually print. And then, of course, these are accompanied by our education modules, which cover a range of topics, the geosciences, the Trail of Tears Indian Removal Act, uh, which is another project of mine, and the Underground Railroad. In addition to our objects, 
The way that we're bringing archaeology into the classroom at present is through our online GIS combined with the objects. So the idea is you go and you print your objects, you have your lesson plan to ask those simple questions. Part two is using primary sources, the Library of Congress, uh, with, with the information uh, to better understand those objects and then recombining them with their context, not only at the local level using the specific areas in which the objects were recovered, but also at the regional level in which we have, I've developed a number of layers that um, runaway slaves were advertised in these counties in newspapers in in the area of interest and the intensity with which um, we can challenge ideas that the Underground Railroad was a network that only operated in the north, that people were going to Canada. Actually, they were trying to flee westward as well. We can see that they're using river routes, and these are unknowns. Um, and certainly the component of being able to talk about African Americans as subaltern group who is traditionally considered to be a, a group of, of victims who are being helped by Anglos and um, being moved elsewhere. Actually, we see sort of this empowering uh, cultural component that these communities are actually very strong and helping folks along the way. So there's a bit more to it, but I will stop there. So thank you so much. Thank you.